realizing that the Bible was written to believers. If you didn't know that, the Bible was written to the church. Each of the letters were addressing what was happening in the church. And there's certain things that are mentioned in the Bible that are very interesting because you'd think that the Bible would only speak on positive things and edifying and building up. But there's a lot of correction, a lot of bringing to order in the Bible. And when you look at what's going on in church today, when you look at what's going on in the hearts of believers today, you realize the importance of understanding the whole truth that is in the Bible. And walking on the journey as a believer, we have to think and we have to consider what is the end? Where are we going in this journey? Is Christianity for this time? Is Christianity for us while we're in the world? What happens after this? I know that people talk about heaven and hell, but do we truly believe in a heaven and in a hell? Do we understand the consequence of the life we live here on earth? And, and when we realize that our journey here on this earth is timed, we're not going to live forever here in this world. Yes, we can achieve success and, and, and greatness and we can, we can achieve riches and everything that the world has to offer. But there comes a time where the journey on this world must come to an end. And there are consequences. The reward for the life that we lived on this earth is now given to us when time ends in this world. So what is it about? If it is about eternity, then what separates me from the rest of the world? What makes a believer in Jesus Christ different from the world? Because in all fairness, it's difficult now to distinguish the believer and the non-believer. And one of the reasons for that is that there's a, a malware, a virus that has come into the church. Some of it has come over pulpits in the church, but a lot of it has come from the desires of the saints that are in the church. And we can blame whoever we want to blame for the way we are, but the reality of it is that you will give an account to God for your own life. And you're not going to be able to accuse or blame anybody except yourself. You will be judged for the way you lived and the way you are and the things you did. You will be judged. And how you live your life on this earth then determines whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell. And I want you to know that heaven and hell are very real places. So, on thinking about that and on just looking at the way things have been right now, we come to the verse in 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17 that says, Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Because if you love the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. And he says, all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And these things are not from God, but they are of the world. And he says the world and those lusts, they're going to pass away. But he that does the will of God will abide forever. And then in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, Paul says that don't be conformed to the world, but let your mind be renewed to the thinking or to be in sync with the mind of Jesus Christ so that you may do what is the will of God. So it's important for us to do the will of God that we understand and that guarantees us a life in eternity. I mean, Jesus was here on the earth and he was constantly in the will of the Father, constantly said, I'm about my Father's business. He told the disciples when he was after he had spoken to the Samaritan woman, he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me. So the first thing that I want to throw out there to you is, do you desire 
to do the will of God. Because there's two things here that are fighting against each other. It's the world and the will of God. The world and the will of God. They are at contrast constantly. So do you desire the will of God or do you desire the things of the world and the world itself? Now, we know what the will of God is. That is to walk in obedience to the instruction and the will of God, which is recorded in the Bible. But what is the world? What world is he talking about there? The word used there for world is cosmos. It means the, the, the culture of the world, the, the government, the system of the world, the way the world works, the behavior of the world. Okay, so everything that is in the world. Now, I'm not talking about the earth. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the system of the world. And everything that is in the world is designed to draw you further and further away from God. And when you do the will of God, the will of God is then designed to draw you closer to God and further away from the world. And I can give you an example. Okay, something as simple as a mobile phone. How much time do you spend on your mobile phone? How much time do you spend on social media, on, on, on YouTube? How much time do you spend browsing the internet? Okay, how much time do you spend watching short clips, funny clips or short videos on your mobile phone? And then compare that with how much time you spend in the Bible. The mobile phone is representative of a system that is worldly, a system that is designed to take you away from God. The Bible represents a system that is designed to draw you towards God and take you away from the world. So based on how much time you spend in your Bible and how much time you spend on your mobile phone shows how close or how far you are from God or from the world. You get that? So, he says here, don't love the world, neither the things that are in the world. And we see in modern church today, a lot of Christians are worldly. A lot of Christians are worldly. And it's something that I say with sadness, because God is no longer a conversation anymore. It's about clothes, it's about cars, houses, money, and Mostly it's about gadgets and devices. It's about having that social status that is desired out there in the world. And even if you go to a lot of churches these days, some people are privileged to be in churches that don't have that kind of order or structuring. But a lot of churches, you get preferential seating based on how much you give or if you've paid a monthly subscription or a monthly premium to, to get access to certain areas of the church. And there's preferential seating not based on the person's need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it's based on the person's social status. There are people in churches that are promoted not based on their commitment or their faithfulness to God, but based on their social status, on their standing in the world system. That means they dress well. That means they've got the latest and nicest car. That means they've got the latest and best phone. That means they rolling with the latest and best laptop and they've got all the, the gadgets and trinkets and toys that people can have. That means that they stand out. They stand out in a worldly sense. They're famous, they're successful, they're good looking and so on and so forth. And they're put into positions in the church, not based on how faithful they are to God, not based on how much time they spend in prayer, how much time they spend in seeking God through His Word, not based on how much time they spend fasting, but it's based on how they fit into the order of the world, and that is sad. And you'll find that it's difficult for somebody who's committed to God, somebody who's 
serving God hard, who's praying, who's fasting, seeking after truth, seeking after God, who's humbled themselves before God, but works at a fast food restaurant as a cleaner in a fast food restaurant. You'll find that it's hard for that individual to gain access to the higher places in churches these days in terms of sharing the word, in terms of leadership roles and all those kinds of things. Why? Because a lot of us have come to the point where we love the world and we can blame the higher ups in churches and say, no, it's the the heads of the church. But that's not true. It's everybody. It's all of us from the lowest of saints to the highest because that's what we want. We want equivalence with the world. Our music in church has to be much more worldly these days because that's what the world wants it's entertaining it draws people and we've become compromised because of the love of the world but the instruction in the bible is clear do not love the world neither the things that are in the world but then he goes on and then he says that all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life now or what's that What's up with that? What's the lust of the flesh? What is the lust of the eyes? And what is the pride of life? Let's let's have a look at that. But the lust of the flesh is self-indulgence. No no restrictions. No no honor. Do what thou wilt. You know, it's it's it's, it's giving in to the desires of the flesh. Whatever I want to say, I'll say it. I don't care who la Oh, I offend. You know, people tell each other these days, listen, I don't really like you. And we hear things like, no, I'm a straight talker. People fall into sin as and when they please. People tell lies as and when they please. People do what they want. And I'm not talking about people that are in the world, that are bound in darkness. I'm talking to church folk. We do as we please. We're more focused on the flesh and the carnal nature than we are on the things of God. It's the lust of the flesh, greed and carnal desires. And we, we don't read the Bible. We don't pray. And we're sitting in front of television the whole day, in front of our devices the whole day. Is the lust of the flesh, giving in to the passions of the flesh, self indulgence. The lust of the eyes is simply the desire for beautiful things, whatever the world deems as beautiful, not beautiful things as you behold them. You know, back in the day, there used to be a saying that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but it's not that way anymore. These days, beauty is in the eye of what is trending. And people today, the lust of the eyes, beautiful things, it's cars, houses, men, women, anything that is beautiful according to the world system today is what people desire. Jewelry and all this, and this is to feed the lust of the flesh. So we're looking at things, and even if you look at advertisements, they mostly don't tell you about what the product does, but they show you how beautiful it is and they speak about the design of the product and then a lot of advertisements have beautiful people in them and people that are practically naked in the videos, but it's to appeal to the lust of the eyes. And you look at what's trending in the world and you want to fit into that It's appealing to the lust of the eyes. And this brings us to the pride of life, self-righteousness, self-glory, wanting to be a part of what is trending, what is is popular, wanting the, the high status. It's so important these days for people to have many likes and many comments, many subscribers and many followers. You hear people saying like, I've got, I've got, 
2,000 friends on Facebook. You hear people saying things like, my WhatsApp status, 400 people viewed my WhatsApp status yesterday. Those are the kind of things we live for, the pride of life. Those that, that consider themselves to be the higher ups, they belittle those they consider to be the lower downs. That is the pride of life and we're boastful in the riches of the world. We no longer boast in Jesus Christ, but we boast in the riches of the world. People want to talk about the phone I got, the house I got, the car I got, the bank account I got, the clothes I wear. They cost this much and this much and look at this. And, and we don't like people that don't prop us up and praise us, you know. We, we want people that want to exalt us and give us lofty titles and high titles. That is the pride of life. In, in a way, we become gods in this earth. Self-worship. Somebody that doesn't agree with you, they out of your inner circle. Somebody that tries and corrects something that you're doing or say wrong, they're out of your inner circle. You're a higher up. What you say goes. You know everything. That is the pride of life. And I want you to notice something, that those three things, he says, come from the system of the world. In fact, he says that is all that is in the world. Those three things, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He says that is all that is in the world, and those things will pass away. And you must not love the world. Now, in Galatians chapter 1, verse 4, it talks about how Christ redeemed us from an evil world. There's something that I want you to understand about the world. If you look at when Satan came to tempt Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 8, he says, to, he says to Christ, he says, if you bow down and worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. And he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. So first of all, we want to take note that the devil rules the kingdoms of the world. The systems that he has created out there. God does not rule the dark world. Satan does. And he offers it to Christ. Why? Because the world system... Christ had to bow to Satan in order for him to gain the world system, the world. Because the world system is anti-God. It's pledging allegiance to Satan. The world is evil. The world hates God. Jesus talks about how they will persecute you because they persecuted him. How they hate him because he exposes their evil deeds. The Bible is constantly talking about wicked men in the world system thriving. But the sad reality is that's the system we want. But John says, don't love the world. People go to work because they want to achieve success in things that are temporal and when I say achieve success, I'm not saying they want to work hard to be the best at their job. No, we're working hard because we want to buy stuff. We want status. It's so sad to see people going to church and acting up because they want to fit in to a certain status quo. They want to fit in with a certain crowd. It's so sad to see Church folk embarrassed by their friends and relatives that don't dress the way that everybody is dressing so that they fit in to the status quo. So you, you, you see your friend, you see your relative or somebody you know coming to greet you and they, they're not dressed too well and they, they've got a phone that is like 10 years old. And people are embarrassed by them because we love the world. We love the world. And we can sit back and we can point fingers at other people that do those things. But let's check ourselves. 
Because the world is perishing, the world is dying, the system of the world is dying and God will bring his judgment on Satan, his kingdom and his world. But those that do the will of God will live eternally. We've got to change our mentality. Remember I said at the beginning of this, there's a war between the world and the will of God in your life. Are you doing the will of God? Isn't it sad that you can know a widow or orphan, somebody in the church, a family member that's going through a little bit of struggle in their life and you, you'll help them just a little bit or maybe not at all. But our subscriptions for television, we pay that. It's down as a priority. We'll never miss paying our subs for television. It's a priority. But to help a human being that is going through struggle is not a priority. You know, people be like, listen, I, I can't, I don't have things are tight at the moment. But to pay subs is a priority. Don't you think that's sad? Don't you think that shows the heart of the church growing cold? Don't you think it's sad that widows, orphans, those that have lack in their lives, that are struggling right now, are ignored by you. But subscriptions, paying for internet services, those are priorities. Those are key items in our budget. We've got to start thinking about what we're doing here. I mean, what really is your desire or what really do you want to achieve with your life are you looking for that status in the world and you don't care what you sacrifice is that what you really want or are you looking for eternity with god because if you're looking for eternity with god it's the will of god that is most important it is the will of god that is most crucial You've got to spend time reading the Bible because that's where the will of God is. You've got to spend time in prayer because that's where your relationship is. You've got to spend time with true church folk, people that are focused on Jesus Christ, looking for eternity with Christ. You've got to spend time hearing the truth, listening to the Bible, reading the Bible. This is important. The world will chew up your soul and the world will corrupt your soul and destroy you. The love of the world will draw you further and further away from God. Worldly riches will destroy you. There's a difference between wealth and worldly riches. There's a difference between somebody owning land, owning property, that they've worked hard for to somebody that's spending thousands and thousands of dollars on cars and trinkets and gadgets. You know, you, you talk to people saying that I've got, I've got 12 cars, I've got 13 cars, I've got 15 cars, I've got 4 cars. What for? What for? It's for status. That's what it's for. It's for the love of the world. Are we so desperate? Are we so weak-minded that we want the worship from men? And you know what the sad deal about it is? The very same people that prop you up and praise you and like you and love you and sing your name make one mistake. Those are the very same peeps that turn on you. Look at what they did to our Messiah, Jesus Christ, and he was innocent. The system of the world is designed for destruction. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Don't love praise from men. Don't love devices, gadgets and trinkets and little decorations. Don't love those things. Value what God says you must value. Guard what God says you must guard thus saving your soul. Love not the world, nor the things that are in the world. In James chapter 4, 
in verse 4, it says that those that love the world or are friends with the world are enemies of God. If you would choose to love the world and the things in the world, you choose to be an enemy of God. Because like I said, the will of God and the world system are fighting against each other. And the more you commit to one, the further you pull away from the other. So if you love the world, you're an enemy of God. If you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of God. And if you're a friend of God, the world will hate you and you will be an enemy of the world. What do you want? What do you really want in life? I know that you know, you give somebody a brand new phone, the latest. Give them a brand new car, the latest. You are happy and you are excited and you feel good and, you know, it's, you feel special. But then a few months later, it's not the latest anymore. You want the next one. You keep looking at the stuff. I remember back in the day, there was this book that came out called The Secret. And the secret said, when you want to achieve something, if you want something, what you've got to do is talk about it all the time, think about it all the time, focus your mind on it, get a picture, stuff that picture on the wall, look at it, meditate on it until you get it. You know what that is? That is the love of the world. Because do you know what you're supposed to be meditating on? The word of God. But that's only if you love God. Only. If you don't love God, well then go ahead. Put your picture on the wall. Meditate on your house and your car and your, your suit. Or put a picture of money on the wall and meditate on all the money you want. But if you say you love God, you're supposed to meditate on the word of God. David did it. He told Joshua to do it. To constantly meditate and do the word of God. And yes, a lot of the principles from the secret were preached in churches. And people were led astray by false teachings that bring, maybe bring riches in the world system, but bring destruction to the soul. It, meditating and desiring the things of this world bring destruction to the soul. Listen, if you get, you get, okay? If you've got a car, that's okay. You don't need to meditate on it and be be overexcited because you, if you've got a house that's good, if you've got a phone that's good, if, if, if you've got money that's good, if you've got smart clothes, that's okay. But they do not define you. You are defined by the word and the will of God. Those things do not matter. Why do they not matter? Because they are temporal. We need to get that into our hearts. So, what will you choose? World or will of God? What are you after? What do you desire most? It's sad. It's sad that a lot of people today will give up their soul for a phone, for a car, for money, for a pair of expensive shoes, expensive clothes. People will do that. They'll lie. They'll get involved in shady business because they want to meet that standard. That's terrible. Because Jesus Christ gave his life so that you can have eternity. He gave his life so you can have eternity. He expressed his love in a, a way that is humiliating because he exposed himself absolutely with the holding nothing. And what do we do? We reject him because we want some piece of material, material item to show status in a world that is dying. What will you choose, the world or the will of God? Because at the end of the day, it's really up to you. 
God bless you. Thank you for watching.